All right, so now that we've got um, all of the fuselage done, we've got all of the whole paneling in, we have the engine mounts created with Mesh Fusion, as well as a few extra details that I added on with Mesh Fusion since I was already uh, using Fusion on uh, on those panels. And then also the uh, the engines themselves uh, kitted out and detailed in the same way that uh, the rest of the fuselage was. Uh, we're ready to go in and start adding in some uh, kind of additional uh, details kind of of different levels. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can either uh, create some of the things uh, manually, some of the smaller uh, order details, uh, things in this case like weapons, missile racks, that kind of stuff, engines. Um, but we're going to look at another way of doing this. You could you could really go about doing those the same way that we've done everything else up to this point. Uh, but we're going to look at doing uh, some kit bashing uh, in order to take some extra pieces um, of existing models. We're going to just look in the Moto stock content here and and putting those pieces into our scene in order to kind of flesh out uh, the details of this ship a bit more. Now, as you continue working on things like this, if uh, this is the kind of thing that you like working on, you will end up building up uh, kind of a a, a bit of a library of your own that you can draw from in order to add pieces in like this. But in this case, like I said, we're just going to be using uh, stuff from the Moto stock content. Let's see, we're inside of the vehicles, inside of meshes, and then vehicles and spacecraft. And this has got all these uh, nice kind of um, engine, antenna, um, weapons, all sorts of stuff like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, engines back inside here and inside of here. Those will be symmetrical, of course. Um, this right-hand drive pod is actually an instance, so anything that we uh, copy and paste into this one on the left will be duplicated over there, so that's going to save us some time. Uh, and then we'll also be looking at adding in some weapons and also at some removable panels so that uh, if we wanted to rig up some more animation on this, we could easily have some pieces that would slide aside and then give us, uh, you know, more kind of hidden weaponry that would be otherwise protected um, if the thing is just flying. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, the front of the engine pods, and that's where I wanted to add in uh, some missile racks. Um, we could also add in some other guns down here, but I'll leave that open to you to uh, kind of do with as you please. But what I'm going to do here is inside of my spacecraft, there is a missile launcher that's kind of this nice uh, square missile launcher. So I'm just going to double click to add that into my scene. And then as soon as that drops in, I'm going to hop back over to the Model tab so I can get this with my quad view and get it into place. And as we begin putting things in here, we're actually going to take and place things uh, just in their own layer. And then as they get completed, we'll copy and paste them either into a separate layer that would house uh, just things like the smaller details or into the uh, the things that would contain them, in this case, like the uh, the like the the drive pods here. So what I'm going to do is set my action center to automatic and I'm just going to start off in item mode here and move this guy over here. You can see it is a bit on the large side so that's okay. We'll just take this here. I'm going to hop into uh, for my scaling I'm going to get into just a uh, a component mode. So let's go to the polygon mode and I'm just going to scale this down until it you know, pretty much fits inside of this housing. So let's kind of adjust the spacing here. And you can see there are a few kind of little details, um, little panels and things on here. I'm going to use these uh, to my benefit so that um, I can kind of plug these into uh, you know the existing stuff here. So let's start uh, just by taking this. I'm going to slide it back until these uh, little cylinders on the bottom are behind the lip that I've created. Uh, so let's put them maybe about right there. And actually, if I look at this here, you can see that the uh, the interior housing that I've built here isn't deep enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that and slide it back. And then I'm probably going to need an extra couple of loop slices there. Well, not seven. How about two? And let's go ahead and just drag those out. There we go. So we get a little bit more solidified interior. All right. So now let's hop back over to our drive pod. And what I'll do is let's move around here where I can see these. And I'm just going to grab all of these circles here. And let's just go ahead and use the bevel tool to pull those down so that this is kind of more attached to the interior here. I think something like that works pretty well. 
And what I'm going to do is, since I've got this kind of corner over here, I'm going to take these and I'm going to slide them pretty much as far over as I can, even if the lip is kind of hiding the edge of it just a little bit, uh, because the, the missiles themselves are not being occluded by this. So I'm just going to kind of slide these over and maybe up just a little bit. And then I'm going to move my cylinders back down. So again, we get the overlap. And then I've got these nice uh, couple of panels right here. Let's so I'm going to take these three panels here. Uh, while we're here, and I'm just going to bevel, and I'm going to pull those over until they kind of intersect uh, the wall inside there, so we get uh, the feeling of these being really kind of mounted in there. So now I'm left with a couple of kind of open spaces here that I can fill in with other things. So let's go back over to my Layout tab. As I look down through here, I've got this nice um, kind of laser, but also looks like an antenna. I'm going to take and uh, put this in there as well. So kind of like the idea that there are some sensors um, involved in this uh, process here. So you know, there's something to kind of help tell when uh, or where I should be shooting my lasers or my missiles. So let's go ahead and take this, and I'm just going to swing it on over into here. And we'll pull this forward. And in this case, you can see that this is really a lot longer uh, than the space that I have here. So if I pull this in here, it's going to stick out pretty far. So I think in this case, I'm actually going to scale this one down just a little bit. I don't want to make it too small, but I definitely don't want it to be so big that I just have a ton of overhang here. A little bit hanging out, I'm okay with, but I don't want it to feel as if it's uh, you know delicate. So let's just take that there. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I had done uh, with the other piece here, and that is just to take the bottom here in this case, it's an open edge, so I'm going to use the Edge Extend tool. And I'm just going to pull that down to where it overlaps. And so that's now housed inside of there. All right, so I could go in if I wanted to add in another piece uh, here or there. Uh, but, you know, you kind of get the general idea here. Now, as I create these, there is going to be a little bit of an issue. And that's that we're going to start adding in all of these um, extra preset materials. Now, uh, materials is a completely different topic that we're not going to get into uh, in the course of a modeling video like this. Um, but I would want to create... a my own materials for these. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete the material groups that come in with those. So now they're just going to have the uh, kind of default uh, material for the rest of the hole. Okay, so now that I've got that, let's go ahead and take both of these pieces here. And I'm going to go to my polygon mode, control X, switch over to the uh, to the engine, and paste. And now the cool thing is, like I said, since the other side here is an instance, we'll now have those uh, same pieces over on the instance side as well. All right, so you can go around and do this kind of all over the place. Uh, just another real quick example here. Let's go and take, and we'll use some, um, we'll use some instances in here to uh, some duplication tools to fill out the engines in the back. So let's go over to, again, our layout tab, and I want to find some nice kind of... Um, thruster looking engines and I think I'm going to go with uh, this one right here it's kind of nice uh, cylindrical the the engines that I've got in the back end I'm going to go with the more elongated ones so I can use the cylinders here for my uh, kind of atmospheric engines so let's take this guy here and we're going to rotate it around so it's facing the right direction and now let's just go ahead and take this guy and move it to the back but it's in kind of the right place. Now I've got this taper in the back here, so I've got to make sure that I, I take this into account as I'm working on this. And what I want to do is I want to uh, kind of swing this whole thing forward enough to where um, to where we get the feeling that it's uh, it's going to fit, but at the same time. Um, you know, I don't want it to hang out too far. So I think what in this case I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of eat a bit of this up into here. And we don't have to use all of any of these presets. That's an important thing to remember is that the, you know, the presets themselves, uh, you know, you don't have to use them directly as they come out of the box. So um, if you take these and modify them to your own needs, you'll end up getting something uh, much more appropriate. So now I'm going to use the Move tool. And let's set... Our action center to selection. Actually, let's set it to automatic. And then I can set my fall off to linear. Make sure that that is a linear shape preset. And now we're just going to pull this back. 
until we get a nice alignment with the interior here. I think something like that is, uh, is pretty good. All right, so now I can just work on a little bit more placement. So, so let's just take this whole thing here and I'm gonna slide it over. So this one's kind of centered up like that. And so that's gonna be kind of the, the main part here. Actually, let's scale this whole thing down a bit. It's a little on the big side. Since I'm scaling it evenly, I'm gonna keep that angle that I've created. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is I want to create a duplicate of this. So let's go ahead and select the whole thing, copy, paste, and just move. And I'm just going to slide it down straight underneath. And really, as I look at this, I've actually got enough room uh, to, to put these side by side. So let's go ahead, once again, take them slide them over. And that's the nice thing about working uh, with, with presets like this is you can allow yourself to have a lot more freedom and flexibility uh, because you didn't spend a bunch of time working um, on the piece in order to get it uh, to get something exactly right. So you can spend a little bit more time, um, you know, making sure that you get everything to fit well, uh, because in the end, you, um, you know, that's where you're spending your time. So let's again, again. So again, let's copy, paste, and go straight to our move tool again. We'll just slide this one over. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one on the top and I'll center it over the other two. I'm going to pull it down in a little bit. And now I could go in here as I want and uh, fill this out with additional pieces. So let's go ahead and add in one more here. Uh, so we'll go to the layout and I'm going to get something smaller. Actually, maybe like that. It's pretty simplified and it's just something that I can drop in, move over. And it's not super descript, but it's going to be a much smaller piece uh, that will give me kind of the idea of some supplemental uh, thrust back here. So let's go ahead and take that move it over into place. It's very big right now, so we'll just take and scale that down a whole bunch and move it into place. And I don't really like that end of it, so I'm going to flip the whole thing around. I think I like this much better like that. And I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more. And then just like with the other one, I'm just going to take all the stuff I don't need here, cut it off. And then we'll just get this whole back end here. We'll get, again, our linear fall off. Make sure that's on the Y. And we'll slide that on back. So, you know, now I could go along and, and create more of these as needed, but you get the general idea here. So I've taken the same kind of concept uh, for the back end of the engines here, so the, the larger engines, and let's go ahead and bring those in, so with the main engine. So this is using just three mesh presets, so the one on either side, uh, this one here duplicated in kind of a stair step, and this one, which is actually the same thing as this one here, but the other side of it, uh, kind of tucked back in there, just to add a little bit of extra detail uh, where you're not going to see it. So let's go ahead here, and just before I finish this up, I'm going to take just a moment to, uh, to duplicate these around and get a little bit better fill, and and then we'll look at adding in some engines here in a second. So I'm just going to pause and then we'll come back in a moment. All right, so I ended up deciding to uh, to go with a, a kind of a, a road pattern with uh, three and three of the smaller engines and two of the big ones, and then just this kind of uh, filled in the space really nicely. Uh, I'm going to one down here, and I don't know if this would be um, necessarily an engine or a thruster, but, uh, you know, it's just a general detail there, uh, a nerdy to fill out uh, you have to fill out the space. So, all right. So, uh, now another way that you can do this here, and we're going to look at something that I've already got in place here, so you can see, is if I take and hide this panel here, you can see that I've got a bunch of guns inside of here. Now, you could choose to uh, set this up when animating pretty much any, any way that you want, but basically all you would need to do is either uh, rotate or swing this door out of the way uh, so that those guns are revealed, and then, you know, you could 
fire something uh, with the guns. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that same kind of thing here up on top. And it's a pretty simple way of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this panel here. But you can see when that panel is hidden, we have nothing underneath except just seeing down into uh, the interior of the ship, which is... Uh, you know, not really what we want. So let's go over here to our items again. And what I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to hide the interior and all the drive pods and our engine mounts and all this extra stuff here. You can get the canopy out of there. Um, get all that extra stuff. So basically we're just looking at, uh, you know, the kind of base model here. So what we want to do is we want to create something that is going to fit inside of here and uh, and will fill in the space so that uh, when this panel lifts up or slides away or whatever we're going to do with it, um, you know, there's something in there. Now the really easy way to do this is just to reutilize some of the stuff that we had already done. So I go up to this whole item, which is where we had been getting all of our pieces for the uh, for the plating, I can just take this here and I'm going to copy it, and then we'll move back down into our panels layer, and I'm going to paste that in. All right, now in this case, I've got um, a couple of options here. So what I want to do is create a little bit of an overlap with uh, the panels next to it, the adjacent ones, uh, left, right, forward, and back. Um, and then I want to take and create a little bit of an inset so I have somewhere you know, to, to put that uh, weapon. All right, so what we're going to do in this case is I'm going to hide everything else just for right now. And I'm going to turn on symmetry. And I'm just going to start by taking these pieces right here. And I'm just going to use edge extend to kind of pull these out. And I don't even need to go very far. So I'm going to go maybe, maybe like 100 millimeters. Really, that's all it's going to take. Then I'm going to do the same thing here on the front, um, except I'm going to uh, kind of continue along so that we're keeping the same silhouette, the same uh, angle, right, so that we're not getting any uh, disruption where this is going to poke out into uh, the other pieces there. And so we went forward 50 and down 85. I think that'll work pretty well there. And then let's go up to the top here and do the same thing. So again, edge extend. And this one I'm just going to pull, I think, straight back uh, to work. Okay. So let's go ahead and unhide our panels. Except we'll have to rehide the one that's uh, in the way. And then we're just going to take this little bit right here, use the bevel tool. And for right now, I'm also going to bring my interior back in because I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping my interior. But with the bevel tool... We can just take this and then I'm going to pull it down a little bit here. And then I'm going to use my scale tool to flatten this out. And then we'll pull it down even a little bit more. All right, so we're looking for this nice kind of, um, you know, flat area down there. And I noticed that these have a little bit of wobble to them, so I'm going to take and straighten that out just a little bit. All right, so now we have the, the area where the uh, weapons are going to go. And now if I bring the plating back in that goes uh, kind of in the back there, you can see that we're not getting any uh, overlap or anything with that. It's just kind of sitting underneath everything there. We don't need to worry about having this be sub -Ds or anything like that, uh, because even when it's visible, it's going to be semi-occluded by the panel that's just moved out of the way. And it's going to have something else in there. In this case, I'm going to put a laser in there. So let's go again back over to our layout. And there is a nice a uh, little uh, turret down here on the bottom that I'm going to use. So let's just take double click on that and then we'll go back to our model tab. We'll get that in place, copy and paste it into our fuselage or our panels mesh and uh, we'll be pretty much ready to go. So it's starting off really big. So we'll just take turn off symmetry and flip it around so it's going the other way. Scale it down so it's much, 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 much smaller. And then we'll start kind of moving it into place. Remember, we want it to sit inside so that it's not disrupting the, you know, the actual, um, you know, silhouette here. All right. So it also looks like it's a little off center. So let's go ahead and do center selected on the X. There we go. And we'll scale it down again a bit more. We want it to fit all the way inside here. And then we'll move it over here and pull it down just a bit. And what I can also do here is take and adjust. I'm just going to take the very back pieces here and I'm going to pull those down just a little bit so we get a little bit of a, a slant. And then we're going to go back here and pull this one down. And then just like with the pieces on the other part, I'm going to take this bottom polygon and I'm just going to move it down to where it overlaps 
Looks like this is going to be right above the bunks. So hopefully the guys are heavy sleepers if they're in a battle, or hopefully they're not sleeping if they're in a battle. And then I'm actually going to uh, cut that polygon out because we don't need it there anymore. And again, go back to shading, grab this extra material that's been created. And now we have a, a, a nice little weapon that's in here. And let's take it, I think we moved it down a little too far. So let's go just maybe right there. What I'm looking for is I want it to uh, clear the... the uh, the front here so that it's not going to shoot itself and let's switch over to just a front view here so we can see oh yeah we've got good clearance there and now we're gonna take this and we're just going to cut it move over to our main body here paste it in and then we'll unhide the panel and now just so you get an idea of how this would work we have a couple of different options um, I think with this one I would probably opt for having this piece kind of lift and then slide back you know so maybe it uh, slides back here and rotates as if it's uh, kind of guiding along the panels up above it and it only has to get out of the way enough to where that becomes visible and then it can uh, you know it can fire all right, so let's undo that and put it back in place. And rigging is something that we would look at on another day. All right, so you can go ahead and kit out your ship as much as you want, adding in uh, weapons, engines, antenna, um, anything that you think would help to uh, kind of sell the finished piece. And then you've got uh, pretty much everything that you need to, uh, to fill out and complete the design of your ship. If you want to, you could also take and uh, you know do the same kind of thing on the interior. Um, just remember, as you're working on interior, and exterior at the same time it's really easy for a model to get really heavy really fast so let's go ahead and bring back in all of the other pieces uh, we've got nope, that's our guide for the engines there's that there's that so we've got our two engines we've got our drive pod shafts we've got our canopy we've got the forward cannons that are hidden underneath there and we've got the main engines back there so you can see right now we're looking at seven and a half million polygons and I don't have the troopers in the bay uh, now if I were to go ahead and hide the interior you'll see that drops down to five million polygons uh, we do however uh, lose our, our our cockpit and everything so I'm going to bring that back uh, most of the interior is not too high poly except for our characters for the most part so there we go now we've got our piece uh, pretty much ready to go so we'll just have a few extra finishing touches to look at and then you'd be ready to take this model and move on to any other step you'd like texturing modeling animating whatever the case may be but we've got one more piece that we want to do here before we call this one done so I'll see you in the next lesson